11 under Julia Huddleston. Uh, but as I said, Rollins, of course, came out to much more aggressive after dropping three in a row. Lynn, on the plus side, they have won their last two. And uh, they're back in it. They're, they're certainly feeling pretty good about themselves at this point. Yep, if you're Lynn, you want to have a continue your strong start that you had to end the first half and force Rollins into, more, into a tight into situation because Rollins has shown when the game goes down late, they will give the ball away and not take care of the basketball like they would for the majority of that game. They have come out here in some recent third quarters, have the Rollins Stars, and uh, hit that lull that they are famous for. Uh, let's see if they can avoid that here as we uh, get ready to go into the third quarter. The veteran Mitch Kaufman working with Ian Ross and Alex Espeo for the Sunshine State Conference. Stars in the white. Blue numerals, blue and gold trim. Lynn with the blue, white numerals and trim. And the possession arrow looks like Rollins will have the first possession here of the second half. For Lynn, they will start uh, Vasquez. They will start Zilkova, uh, Penasino, Williams. And let's see, is Kelsey Fleiser in there? Yeah, the same starting lineup. Penasino is the only player on Lynn who started every game. Here we go, Harrison. Well, work it right side. Woman to woman by the Lynn Fighting Knights. McClendon. Now we'll give it to Engler in the corner. Got the taller Zilkova out on her to avoid the three. Check that. Jasmine Stone now is in that starting lineup. Here is the turnaround. And it will rattle home by Vernicia. Nice feed by uh, Jasmine. And Stone gets the assist. Andrews the first points of the half. Eight point Rollins lead. Here's Vasquez. Now she will work it on the post. McClendon tips that ball and turning and blocking McClendon. Nice play by Carly. And here's Vernicia Andrews. And she will get it off to Harrison to, in a hurry. The transfer from Georgia State. 5-4 sophomore. Picks it up. And now here's Andrews. Zilkova on the switch. Andrews goes baseline. Skip pass to Harrison. Under 10 to shoot, a minute into the third quarter. Harrison goes around traffic. Wide open is Stone, buries the three. They're so worried about Harrison with that dribble penetration inside. They collapsed down on her three fighting nights and left Stone open at the top to bury the three. Boy, she found Jasmine wide open. Jasmine took her time and knocked it down. It was Zilkova. Working a little down screen set up here by Lynn. And now Pfizer, only two three-pointers on the year as they get it in the post and a great feed. And knocking down the bucket is Kelsey Pfizer, her third point. Lynn cuts the lead to nine. Harrison may have taken a, a little extra step there. Now gives to McClendon on the baseline. Engler got a little bit of room and buries another one. Fourth three, Julia now with 208, uh, adding to her career record here at Rollins. Under eight minutes remaining, 12-point lead for Rollins, their biggest, Pfizer. Now on the perimeter to Vasquez. Andrews on her, and she goes right around Andrews and banks it in. She can go left or right. And here is Harrison, now feed it to McClendon. Boy, I thought she was going up with it. As uh, breathing real heavy is Janae Williams inside there. Tars up by 10. Engler way out again. That's going to come up short and will go out of bounds. And saw the Tara bench wanted Engler to wanted uh, McClendon when she got that ball to pull up from that 6 yeah. 18 foot jumper. It's been working for her when she's got a chance to make that shot. 10 point Rollins lead. And that ball stolen by Engler. Hello. And tip back in. Engler moves our table back a little bit. And an easy shot inside. Put up and in by Juju Uloma. She's got five. Cuts the Rollins lead to eight. Last four points have belonged to the Fighting Knights. Here's Andrews. Keeps that dribble going on the wing. Now picks it up. McClendon. Turnaround. Left-handed shot is good. There you go. Just what you called for, Victor. Yep. Six for Carly, 10 point Rollins lead. Uloma, out of Vasquez, she is a handful. Juju Uloma, no threat from three point range. 
This woman's a threat anywhere. Nice stop and go. And McClendon, who got a piece of her? Somebody. Stone was right there in the area, and she'll be called for that foul. And that's the first on Jasmine Stone. She's got that little stop and go move. And Bosquez looking for her, her uh, 15th point. Check that, her 17th. She already has a bucket here. Average is 15. And can cut it back to an eight-point game. 6.30 remaining. Vasquez now with 18. And it's 47-39. Bistro in the ball game, replacing Jasmine Stone. And they've got uh, Penasino now out on Engler. Joe Bistro with Vasquez on her. That left-handed dribble. Here's Andrews. Kicks it to Daniels, 18 feet out, off the iron, no good. Great rebound again, Vernicia Andrews. Now Vernicia will take it inside and knock it down. Andrews has Shanahan playing on her, Robert, so if Andrews gets a shot like that, she's going to have to capitalize, force Shannon to come back, and then you give Andrews the opportunity to cut either way. Shanahan much bigger, but much slower. Now Weave, top of the key. Rokova gives it to Vasquez. And she turns the corner and banks one up. No good. Good defense, Andrews. Away comes Harrison. Gives to Bistro. Oh, Bistro almost overshot that one and got it to roll. Great feed, Harrison. About a 30-foot pass down low, and the Tars attacking. Coming out here in the third quarter and uh, still attacking that goal. Looking much better than they have over the last 10 days. And it's now a 51-39 ball game. We've got to make sure everything is here after Julie Engler. <laughs> well, everything is all present and accounted for, Robert. We'll take a look at the scores in the conference. Yeah, just a few there you moments. go. It's worse like in life. It takes hard work and dedication to be the best. And that's where Career Source of Central Florida comes in. Career Source Central Florida can guide you and your business to be the best they can be. The team of highly trained business consultants are available to help you hire, train, and expand your team. They tailor their group for their recruitment services to fit your needs. So if you're looking for the best, visit them at CareerSourceCF.com to get started today and build your team of qualified talent. Career Source Central Florida, as always, tailored from every angle, your angle. And looking around the conference in Miami Shores, 534 left to go in the third. Ecker pulling away from Barry, 49-36. Nova Southeastern beating Tampa in the Martinez Center, 45-36, 7.26 to go there. And Florida Southern showing why they are the top team in the league all over Palm Beach Atlantic, 51-29. 5.03 left to go at the Rubin Arena. Yeah, they're headed for 11 and 2. Eckerd uh, looking to go to 9 and 4 and stay up there with Embry Riddle, who will play later tonight at St. Leo. If you want to watch uh, those games, uh, just go to the Sunshine State Network digital platform set up by Robert Brennicke, Assistant Commissioner, under uh, Commissioner Ed Pasquet, and you can watch and uh, listen to that Embry-Riddle St. Leo doubleheader coming to you from the beautiful rolling hills of Pasco County. Stepping back and firing a three is Snipes. She will miss that. And another rebound taken down uh, by Andrews. And that will be her 10th. And here's Jalen Harrison. Great move and around Shanahan and scores at one. No fear there, Jalen Harrison. Took it into the tall trees, and that will be a three-point play opportunity. She got and she got Snipes leaning, and she was able to blow by her on the left. Shanahan collapsed down. Lay was worried about Andrews with the Pablo dish off from Harrison. Gets the contact, and Harrison will try and join Engler in double figures. Midway through the third quarter, this is the first free throw, and that's way off the mark. Harrison, about a 70% free throw shooter. Daniels almost stepped into the lane and might have disconcerted her. And here is Potts. Potts gives it off to Vasquez. As uh, here's Vasquez going around Andrews and drawing the foul. Vernicia went to help on Potts, and you can't do that and leave Vasquez alone. She will use you. And there's a matchup that we were talking about. Vasquez being guarded up now by Andrews if we go into our media timeout in this third quarter. And Andrews 
can match the quickness of Vasquez and can force Vasquez into much tougher shots as she unposed to what she had with open looks and easier opportunities of Ovatoris defending her during this game. Now in the game, Christine Potts, the transfer from the Naval Academy, and she will shoot the three, so you've got to honor that, but uh, she's much quicker than she appears. Definitely, Robert. The Rollins College Department of Athletics is able to provide ongoing support for our student athletes, thanks to our dedicated and generous corporate partners. If your business is interested in helping make a difference in the continued success of the Rollins College Stars, please contact Megan Henders in the Athletic Department at 407-646-2663. And uh, Coach Wilkes working his troops over there with uh, assistant uh, coaches Tammy Stark. And uh, welcome back to Courtney Barry with her new son, Jessica Phillips, formerly Jessica Barker there as well. A, a young lady you see with the boot, the cast, is Tiana Rosser. Hurt herself the uh, first couple of games of the season. And uh, she tells me she's coming back strong and hopes to have that uh, cast off very, very quickly. Ivana Edwards also is not dressed today. So again, it's all on McClendon and the Daniels to be the real post presences for Rollins, and they've been doing a tremendous job in that light as Vasquez hits that first free throw. Vasquez had eight against the Stars the first time, but already she's got 20 in this one. Now they need help. Stars need help. You can run the baseline. And I don't know if Andrews realized that, and here's Bernicia across the line. Bernicia's going to take it off. Forced it. But I had to throw it right through a couple of blue shirts and got it taken away a little too quickly on that one. Here's Juju Uloma with uh, Engler on her, and she will jump it up inside. Missed the shot, and Daniels will get the ball. And the pot's all over both of them. 12-point Rollins lead. 20 of those 41 points for Lynn. And that ball's tipped out of bounds. I was getting a little lackadaisical with that pass. McClendon will come in. Martinez Toro will come in. Andrews will rest and Harrison out. And for Lynn Vasquez, 20 points you alluded to, 6 of 11. The rest of the team, 7 for 20. So they have to find other players besides Vasquez to get them, get them points. Zingler had a little bit of room. Decided not to shoot it. You got four got, shot clock. Got to shoot it. Shoot it. Got to shoot it. And they do. As a, oh, a great rebound by Bistro on the miss by Daniel. Nobody blocked her out. And Bistro's got uh, a four. As uh, Daniels finally realized it with one second on that shot clock. Managed to draw iron. And Rollins back to a 14-point lead. Snipes now. The Vasquez, she's got a screen. Oh, she twists and turns and drives, but misses the layup. Daniels will snatch that rebound down. Oh, Denise, oh, might have double dribbled. I don't know if she touched the ball. Bistro's three, back iron, no good. Long rebound tipped by Engler, and Martinez Toro will Boy, get Daniels the right there, backside. Yeah, she was wide open. They didn't see her. Coach Wilkes said, slow it down, but Denise Daniels was standing alone on the blocks uh, and that ball oh at the feet of Engler and now she'll stop and pop and hit the two. Engler's really feeling it today with 16. 16 point Rollins lead their biggest. And Juju Uloma oh she switched hands and uh, missed the shot and McClendon will draw the foul. Boy uh, she didn't know Engler was behind her and switched hands just in time to avoid the uh, tip away. Yeah, and Engler was slow getting up. She tried to get that reach in and kind of slid right in front of the free throw line right behind Uloma. 14 free throws for Lynn, just one for Rollins. And they're going to have 16 by the time Uloma is finished. Jasmine Stone will replace her fellow senior Engler. Juju Uloma now one of three, 75% shooter from uh, Nigeria. Just a freshman. A lot of good young players here, and that ball is going to be tipped out of bounds. And Daniels slapping her chest, saying it's her fault. Yep. She just kind of reached out with one hand for it instead of going with, with two, and usually you end up having to pay here. They're sitting in Vasquez around a couple of screens. That ball tipped, but Uloma now will take it, give it off to Potts. And a call a foul on McClendon. 
And she picks up two in a hurry there, and that'll be three. She's going to have to probably sit. Let's see, now they're going to leave her in there. So you got to be careful. Those pots, much shorter, but very stocky. Now we'll shoot the 17th and 18th free throws by the Lynn Fighting Knights. Potts with four, averages four, and McClendon will have to come out, so a much shorter lineup now for Rollins. 2.43 remaining, Christine Potts at the Naval Academy, and she hits them both. She's three for three from the line, has five points, and here comes Denise Daniels takes it all the way in and scores. Had the easy matchup with Paz was able to beat her off the dribble all the way. Daniels now with eight in the game. And you Loma will have come back quickly and answer. Well, yeah, Andrews cannot catch that. Catch the ball. She's trying to catch it and dribble it at the same time. And here comes Vasquez. Ole. 22 for her, back to a 12-point game. Two easy layups for Lynn. And that was the bugaboo over at uh, Florida Tech, allowing people to get that step and drive it to the goal. And so are Vasquez now with uh, 22 in this one. Tara's just lackadaisical, not grabbing the ball on the rebounds, not grabbing the ball when it's loose. Trying to uh, do a little too much, perhaps. And they have had their 16-point lead cut to 12 with 2.07 remaining. And again, Robert, as Vasquez is doing everything she can, trying to give Lynn a chance, and now she's getting a little bit of support for Oloma with seven points. And right now, I feel the Tars are trying to figure out what they're going to do with McClendon on the bench with those three fouls. Where are they going to get that presence down low to try and force Lynn to collapse the defense and get themselves open shots from three? Andrews with eight points and ten rebounds. Daniels also with eight. Bistro has six in this one. And now Rollins with the ball. Under two minutes. Let's see if they can answer here. They've got Jasmine Stone in the lineup. She will try to answer. That's off the mark. Long rebound will be run down by Bistro. Cars now will get another possession. Jalen Harrison back in the ball game. Tight woman-to-woman -woman defense being set up. And a nice feed underneath. Jasmine Stone missed everything on that layup. Went right over the rim. Wow. Here's Vasquez. Now we'll kick it off to Uloma. They're getting the ball right down on the blocks and making Rollins pay for it here. Six straight now for the Lynn Fighting Knights. Looking back door, Andrews might have shuffled there. Daniels gives to Stone, stopping and short. That's well short. You can see her pull that one back. She missed the layup and that got into her head a little bit. Now quickly up again, here's Potts working on the smaller player and another layup. That's four in a row. And it's back to an eight-point game. 8-0 eight run by Lynn, all layups. Andrews now to Daniels. Need a bucket. Nope. There they go. Hitting the low. And quickly up court. And the ball tipped away by Harrison, but right back in the hands, and we're going to have a foul on Harrison. And that'll be two shots there for Sidney Fields. And Lynn beating the Tars up court. Julia Huddleston uh, on the sideline. Lynn's only committed one foul in this half, only committed three in the first half. And Sydney Fields at the line, 50% shooter. And since McClendon has gone out, it's really hurt the Tars down low. And especially with Uoma starting to establish herself, has nine points in this contest. Nine in a row now for Lynn. First points for Sydney Fields. Averages three out of Conyers, Georgia. Six foot sophomore. She's every bit of six feet. Now can cut it back to six. Nope. But the rebound will come down to Juju Uloma. And she will uh, keep it inbounds and miss the shot. Another. Oh, Andrews got to slow it down. She's dribbling into traffic. 
She's got to slow it down and almost throws it away but gets a, a break on the pass. Just trying to do too much there. Dribbled right to midcourt and then picked it up. And if that had not been a foul, that would have been over and back. Now they need help to inbound the basketball. And they get it. Now with uh, the shot clock off, Engler is back in. Now picks it up. 12 to shoot. Tars need a bucket to close this quarter uh, after this uh, nine point run here as Harrison now will back it up, stop and go. And will bank it in. And wow. the foul. And the foul. What a move. Step back, stop and go by Jalen Harrison. Coach Wilkes telling them there's four to shoot. We got to press the, the backcourt here, whether they make it or miss it. Harrison missed her first three point play opportunity, misses that one badly. Uh, now three, two, one. Snipes will fire. Has a chance. A little short. So Rollins 0 for 2 from the line. And Lynn 13 for 20. But that bucket by Harrison uh, closed out a last 9-0 uh, run by the Lynn Fighting Knights. So they will go to the fourth quarter, will the Rollins Stars, with... A 61-52 lead. Yogaland wants you to make a good day great with over 200 unique flavors and nothing but fresh, high-quality ingredients. You're sure to delight every taste bud. Located on North Orlando Avenue, across the street from Winter Park Village, Yogaland, where real ingredients make a big difference. 61-52, we've got games all over the league, except the St. Leo and Embry-Riddle that will be playing tonight. And Eckerd going to the fourth quarter, comfortably ahead over Barry, 63-44 in Miami Shores. Tampa has cut the lead down to Lynn, only trailing by six, 54-48, 29 seconds left to go in the third. Florida Southern dominate over Palm Beach Atlantic, 69-31. Wow. On their way to win number 11 in the conference and 16 and 3 overall. Jardina, Fuse, uh, Robiton, and Blasage, a uh, very formidable trio on that team. And uh, as they go, so go the Florida Southern Moccasins. And so far, they look like they're going to be 11 and 2 in conference play, 16 and 3 overall. What a job Betsy Harris has done over in Lakeland. Stars need a win here. They're five and seven, but so is Lynn. So both of these teams want to stay in the hunt to try to get in the top four and also to stay in the top eight. Just get that postseason opportunity in the blue. White numerals, white trim going left to right. First possession belongs to the Fighting Knights. Stars in the white, blue numerals, blue and gold trim. Setting a screen, top of the key. Stopping and popping. And missing. Engler will rebound the Penasino miss. First possession, fourth quarter for the Tars. Looks like they're gonna to try to isolate on the side. And they do with uh, Stone, but she can't get the shot. Harrison, uh, 15 to shoot. A little pressure on Engler there. And Julia now needs uh, help. And McClendon back in. Got nine to shoot. Now you got three, you gotta shoot it. Boom. Julia Engler with about two on the shot clock, buries it. Back to a 12-point game. Let's see if the Tars can play inside tough without getting McClendon's fourth foul. She really can't take a chance on blocking shots now. Snipes three-pointer. Oh, man. 32%. That's her first points of the game. Back to a nine-point game. Harrison to Engler. Now, check that. McClendon. Oh. Andrews against the woman-to-woman. -woman. Setting the screens down low. Jalen Harrison will reset between the circles. Coach Wilkes standing up the uh, far sideline and calling a play. Julia Engler around the screen. Stop and go. Now backs it up. Gives to McClendon. Shoot it! And uh, they're going to give it to her? Barely. Whoa. That Barely. was close. Barely. That was close. <laughs> Have to go to the uh, film on that one. <laughs> There's Snipes now. Tars up by 11. Great play by Andrew. I'm not sure she knew it until someone yelled at her. And McClendon is around the corner. That's way too easy. That's the third layup of the half now for Vasquez. And she's got 24 points. 
Her high for the year, 33 against Kaiser. Nine point Rollins lead. Two minutes into the fourth quarter. Here's Harrison, shoot it. Now gives it back to Andrews. We got a reach in, so three seconds. Three seconds on McClendon. They've only committed uh, in this ball game, Lynn, six total fouls, none in this quarter. Down by nine, 740 remaining. Now moving the ball in the perimeter. Uloma wants to drive, step back, now hands it off. And the runner's no good. McClendon stayed back and forced a tough shot that time by Sidney Fields. Harrison will slow it down to Andrews. Engler broke open, but Aisha couldn't get it to her. Looking for Engler, 15 to shoot. Bounce pass. And Andrews will pick it up, give it to Engler. <laughs> oh, nice feed by Andrews. Engler down the lane with 21 now. Back to 11, we took under seven minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Again, the weave. Vasquez in the next county, misses that shot. And that long rebound will come down and uh, off the iron. What'd she do there? Lost I, the handle? It was kind of between, she, she, she didn't know she, she wanted to throw up a shot runner or try to get a pantry pass to throw it up to Uloma. Ended up hitting the back iron and coming out. And now the Tars with an 11 point lead. We'll give it off to Engler. Want her to shoot it from anywhere the way she's feeling today. Julia's eight for 11, including five of seven beyond the arc. Seven to shoot, Jasmine Stone's got it. Andrews will turn around and miss the shot. And Snipes with 6.15 remaining. 68-57, working on Harrison. Goes right into Harrison. And block, good Harrison good got defense block. by Jay Lynn. And now she will pull it back and slow it down. Tars got three ready to come over the wall there in front of the scorer's table. Ing McClendon looking back door for Engler, not there. Tars doing some nice screening away from the ball here as Andrews will post up. Again, letting the shot clock run down. Step three, away off the mark. And Vasquez will get it up ahead. And Engler playing some defense there and she tips it out of bounds. Tenacino trying to drive. Martinez, Toro, Bistro, Daniels in. Stone, Andrews, Harrison out. And also a couple of subs in for uh, Julia Huddleston or Janae Williams will check back into the lineup. She hasn't been playing much in this half. And Potts back in, Christine Potts. And what a drive, baseline. How'd she get through traffic? Jalen Snipes with five in the quarter, five in the game. Cuts it to a nine point game. They will not uh, let the Tars get away. Rollins has led by as many as 16 in this one. Bistro. Martinez Toro, again 10 to shoot. Setting the screen. Engler gets bumped and will take it all the way. Nope, foul on the floor. Nope, they're gonna say she was in the after shooting with five seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, they're going to give her two. Ooh, that was a bailout. Engler was uh, about six feet out on the right side trying to fire up a bank and uh, got fouled. Yeah, Penasino called for yeah Penasino called for the foul. That's going to be her first. That's unusual. 85% shooter. She's been knocking down everything today. Tars are 0 for 3 from the line looking for their first charity point. Second one. That's the way they usually go. 22 for Engler. Ten point lead as we tick under the midway point of the fourth quarter. There's Vasquez. Nice feet underneath. Shot is missed. That ball goes out of bounds. They're going to call a foul. Yep, foul on Engler reaching in on Williams when I to get the stick back. Williams is a very large presence in there. She will shoot two more. 21 and 22 free throws now for the Lynn Fighting Knights. Should that be a media timeout here? Yeah, it's 450. There we go. So that's to know we're aware of when the timeouts are. Janae Williams, 40% shooter, will go to the stripe. Third foul on Engler, by the way. As the Tars have held a uh, 
decent lead here, but Lynn will not let him go away for sure. So far in this half, Rollins is a plus yep. four after leading by seven at the half, six at the half. 450 remaining. I'm Robert Siegel along with Victor Anderson. You're listening to Rollins College Basketball around the world on the uh, Sunshine State Conference digital site and also on RollinsSports.com. We will be on the road Wednesday in Daytona from the ICI Center. 5.30 is the game. We'll be on the air about 5.20. And uh, then on next Saturday, we'll be over in Tampa. The Sam today the latest news and information about Rollins Athletics on your phones, laptops, or tablets, just like Rollins Sports on Facebook at facebook.com slash Rollins Sports. And be sure to join the conversation and follow the Tars on Twitter at Rollins Sports. 4.50 remaining, fourth quarter. A quickly paced ball game. Only one foul apiece here in the fourth quarter. But that one was just committed by Rollins and will send Jen A. Williams, the Decatur, Georgia product, averaging about five and a half points, five rebounds. The game did not play against Rollins in the first. 40% shooter. They've got some size on this team, no question about it. And Janae Williams thanks that one. Free throws have been a problem for her, shooting 40% from the charity shop this year. And the thing about Williams, Robert, she's only a sophomore and well, as a freshman last year, was top six in the conference in rebounding, just averaging over seven per game. And she's got one of two, that's 50%. <laughs> Nine point lead, now pressure in backcourt, and Harrison is in the ball game. The handle. McClendon will set a screen. She's got to be careful with those three fouls. Now Carly works to Daniels, who's been very quiet here in the fourth quarter. 15 to shoot, 430 remaining. And Daniels around the corner, kicks it off to McClendon. And this is another layup. Man, left-handed, left side layup, and she's missed two of them. At least two today. They weren't close, really. Andrews will replace Bistro in the lineup. That was a great offensive set and a dish from Double D. And I'm not sure what's going on with McClendon in those layups. He's had a bunch of them this year. Here's Vasquez. Jalen Snipes. Potts will jack one up off the iron. And rebound will be taken by Lynn. And Snipes will pick it up and miss the shot. And rebound to Harrison. Now under four minutes remaining here, the Tars is making circular motions as Coach Wilkes. And McClendon, kind of lackadaisical with that ball. We'll hand it back to Andrews. Trying to set screens for Engler. And now we'll get it to Engler. She will miss the layup. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Snipes now, stop and go. And she also fouled on Harrison. That's not a good call from Mitchell. She initiated the contact. The defender was doing nothing wrong. She threw herself into the chest of Jalen Harrison, and uh, Mitch Kaufman gave her the call. Bad call that time by a pretty good official. And the worst thing, Robert, that's the fourth on Harrison. Uh, you don't, uh, you know, that's uh, that's the type of foul that. And they are uh, looking for, she's throwing her shoulder in and just throwing it at the basket. You don't reward a player for that. Seven points now on the missed free throw, a seven point Rollins lead. Tars have missed some layups and we're gonna have a foul by Vasquez. That one was a break. Vasquez was out and open. Second foul on Vasquez, second on the team. Again, four fouls now on Harrison, that's a a big minus, she's having a nice game here. 11 points, handling the basketball. <clears throat> and now with 3.15 remaining, a seven point lead. And Andrews, now will hand it to Harrison. Gets that high screen from uh, Denise Daniels. Step back. Back iron, no good, that rebound is tipped. Oh, should have tipped it out. I don't know, Andrews sort of kind of halfway reached in, here goes Jenny, uh, beautiful steal as Snipes went in. 
And that ball knocked away from her. I'm not sure who got it. But Harrison now will pick it up and give it back to Andrews. It was Andrews who got the steal, and Snipes was a little bit upset. She thought she may have gotten hit on the hand, and I oh, don't blame her there. It looked like Andrews may have got on the reach with that left arm. Andrews is dribbling out high. She needs somebody to come out and help. And here's Harrison. Now with 10, now with 7. Shoot it. Now feed it into Daniels. She'll hook it up way off the mark. And that one tipped up court. And Harrison will try to run it down and will. Almost tipped out of bounds. Very fortunate there. And almost fortunate it was on the call for an over and back. Now that was tipped back into the backcourt. And uh, Vasquez was a little too tired to run that one down. We're under two minutes remaining now. Cars with a seven-point lead. A bucket here would be huge. And here's Engler. Engler now will hand to Harrison. Nine to shoot. They're letting that shot clock get away from him here. And Harrison... Loses the handle, commits the foul, she's gone. She is gone. That's a huge loss for Rollins. Got a little loose with the ball, and now Martinez Toro, the freshman, is going to have to try to take him the rest of the way <clears throat> as Jalen Harrison is out of here. She lost the handle and then committed the foul. That ball was loose. They're going to say, uh, well, that was a, just a third foul. Yeah, it was just a third foul. Well, let's see if Jalen Harrison can uh, come through here, the freshman, as Snipes now will drive. They have gotten more layups. Rollins has missed about three or four. And Snipes can cut it to four here. Snipes was scoreless in the first half. He's looking for her tenth point of the second half. And oh, by the way, Robert, that's the fourth foul on Julia Engler. Not playing defense, letting her just drive the lane. Snipes is 5-2 from Opelika, Alabama. 10 of her last 11, now 11 of her last 12 with double figures. She is an 80% free throw shooter. Missed her first one, but she will cut it to four with that one. 11 points. Let's see how Martinez Toro can come through here. That ball tipped out of bounds. Now full court pressure on the freshman. If the Tars can get a layup and make one. Four point lead, 69-65. Martinez Toro now will come up against double team pressure. She wants to come down the sideline. And now Andrews will take it in and will kick it back out. 94 seconds left. Snipes. That ball handed loosely and tipped, but into the hands of Andrews. Andrews now will give it to Daniels. Somebody's got to shoot it with seven seconds left. Shoot it. Here's Andrews, got to shoot it. There she does, and misses everything. Nobody looking at the basket with 76 seconds left. That's just a crime. <laughs> what are they doing? And now, here's what, and now Lynn, with that great ball in space, the wrong time for the law. And now if you're Lynn, you have Snipes going with 10 in the second half. She's going she... to she's gonna be looking to drive, too, Snipes. Looks like the Tars. Let's see. Are they playing zone? It looks like it. Snipes will fire a three, and that's an air ball. And the Tars just look at it, and it's saved. Seven to shoot. The Tars just looked at it. And now driving it is Snipes, blocked that time by McClellan. And now it's Rollins basketball. Oh, shot clock violation. Uloma got the rebound on the scrum down low. And then by the time she got it, Mitch Kaufman right there, shot clock violation. Well, another block by McClendon that time. Timeout called by Glenn Wilkes, so trying to advance the ball up. Cars have missed layups. They haven't gotten to the free throw line. Glenda's taken 20 more free throws than Rollins. Now they're going to have to inbound the ball, and uh, only two fouls on the line, so now they're going to have to commit some to get it up to the uh, free throw situation. But first, they're going to put pressure on, don't you think? Four yeah, they're going to put lead. Full court pressure has been working for Lynn, especially after makes and, his, and yeah. they played it the halfway through the third quarter, and it's giving the Tar some trouble. Rollins called the timeout. Where was the ball? Oh, the ball was already inbound. Ball so was already inbound. Rollins cannot move it up to the front court, right? Okay. Well, let's see. They're talking it over. Now they're going to say back court. 
And they can't run the baseline, I don't think. You got McClendon Daniels, got uh, Martinez Toro. You got Andrews. And here's they the want to foul somebody, they want to foul Andrews. And here's the, but here's the thing, Lynn has two fouls to give before they put the Torres to the line. Here's Martinez Toro, now to inbound the basketball. Gets it back to Daniels. Daniels to McClendon, wide open, up court. Gotta get it Why over. She's dribbling, yes. Yeah, she gets fouled. She was dribbling where the players were rather than toward us where nobody was. And uh, with 37.7, that'll be the third foul. So it looks like she's going to want to foul and send Rollins to the line to extend this game. And here's the thing, Robert. We, you got one more foul to give. And with Andrews on the court, after they foul Rollins here, which Snipes does on Martinez Toro, that'll be her third. Jalen Snipes runs right into Martinez Toro. And here's the thing, Robert. If you're, if you're Rollins, you don't want to try and give the ball to V. Andrews here. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm surprised she's remaining in here. They want to get it to... Uh, to uh, timeout. They want to get it to Engler. There are only two players back there to get the ball. And that's going to be Rollins' final timeout. That's a full timeout for the Tars. 36.9 left, four point lead. Every foul from here on out, except for player control, will be two shots. And uh, will they take Andrews out? Yep, that's what they're going to do. They're going to put Joe Bishow in the game, who's a career 84% free throw shooter. <laughs> All right, we're going to come down to the wire. Rollins led by as many as 16 before deciding to allow Lynn to shoot a bunch of layups. And credit Lynn, they never gave up, and that's what they've been doing lately under Coach Huddleston. They will take out the larger player, Williams, and uh, substitute in the uh, quicker player, and I believe that will be Mahogany Hall. Yeah, Mahogany Hall comes in. Robert, a development in Tampa. Nova Southeastern was up by 13 at one point. Tampa now leading 71-66, 28 seconds left to go there. Now the Tars to inbound the ball. They were running that little circular thing, but didn't run it quick enough. And now a foul, and Martinez Toro, the freshman, is going to have to come through for the Rollins Stars. On the year, Martinez Toro is three for three. He's got two of them here. They tried to get it to Engler or Bistro. And they started to run that little circle too fast. Freshman misses badly. And if you're there, you got 35 seconds left in two timeouts. Don't need a three right now unless you get it in the flow of your offense. Get a quick two, extend the game. Another free throw. Rollins, one of five on the game. Oh boy, that was really well. Timeout, and, go, and now with the miss in the top. Boy, she just fired that one up quickly and just way off to the right so here comes Lynn let's see what uh, the Tars do on defense if they commit a foul it'll be two shots Lynn now will get the ball in the front court wow every free throw of course uh, obviously huge Rollins one of six from the line and uh, frankly uh, four of those were missed very badly McClendon is uh, still in the ball game? No, they're going to take her out. Need to put her back in here to play some defense. And uh, no foul trouble. Yeah, Snipes now with four. She committed that uh, that foul. So the Tars have to get a stop here. You're right. They're just going to go for the two. They're going to try to drive the hoop and maybe get the, the hoop in the arm. Vasquez and Snipes are going to be the two yeah. main ones. They're going to try and get that ball to in that particular situation. Really got to put pressure on outside here. The Rollins, as we said, is led by 16, but they've been outscored down the stretch here by Lynn and cut this lead down to four points. Uh, two free throws by Martinez Toro. I, I'm really surprised that inbounds pass. They didn't do everything they could to get it to Engler or Bistro. And what they did, they didn't guard the inbounds, so they allowed a double team on Engler and forced somebody other than yeah. her to get if that If they ball. get a miss and Andrews gets a rebound, she's got to get rid of it. Yeah, as quickly as possible. Now the Tars are going to play zone on the inbounds, I believe. Let's Eight. see. 34.2, trailing by four. They're going to get it to Vasquez. No, nope, they're going to get it to Uloma, and Uloma now will take it inside and miss the shot. Rebound is taken down. They need to get rid of it. Oh, man. 
And the problem is, Robert, they double teamed on Andrews, and the way they were double teamed between Paz and Uloma, Andrews didn't have a way to get it to the other side where both Engler and McClendon were. Yeah, they were. Uh, <laughs> she just sort of grabbed it like she was recovering a fumble there, which is good for the rebound, but not good for getting a foul. Free throw is good. Five point lead now as uh, Andrews having herself a double double afternoon. Second. God, what do we know? Andrews down the stretch got a. And now they're going to take it to the front court again. Looking for Nisha. <laughs> you know why I quit this too? It's kind of like T. Jones. She struggled with the free throw shooting. She started to hit them later her junior year, and it carried over to her senior year. Maybe that's the case with Andrews. We don't know. See, she was better earlier in the year and then hit a, a, a dry spell on the free throw. She still doesn't have any spin on the ball, but she's giving Rollins a 71-65 lead. The other thing they did on that possession, they made... Uh, Lynn used about eight or nine seconds before they had a chance to shoot the ball. Yep. And uh, let's see if they can do that again. Now, do you want a three? In this situation, I still will say no, but here's the, but here's the caveat. Neither team has a timeout, so if you don't get that, so if you don't get an open three within the first three or four seconds, drive it to the hole, try and get, a, try and get some contact and have an in one, uh, Rollins uh, ran the zone on that last inbounds, and they're going to run the zone again, that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Uh, frankly, that zone is not the greatest against three-point shooting, but it sure packs it in against the drive. 26.7 seconds left. Rollins with a six-point lead. Snipes now looking for Vasquez against the zone. Now kicks it over to Uloma. Uloma. Misses the layup. Rebound is taken. Daniels uh, lost it out of bounds. Wow. You know, you got to get that ball and just throw it back over your head down court to run the clock. 15.6 seconds left. Looking for a quick bucket inbound. Stolen by Engler. Now Engler now will get it up to Andrews. Andrews will dribble it away. 10, 9. Smart move by Andrews. And she will go to the line. 9.2 seconds left. She thought about laying it up. And Engler was telling her, hey, lay it up. And yeah. But, she could have done that. But, but smart, uh, it, it's, it, it's a smart to play either way. You lay it up. It's a three. It's lay it up. It's going to be back yeah. to a four possession game. You dribble it out. You waste some more clock. She decided to dribble it out. They just caught her a little quicker than I think. Now yeah, there she goes again. It's another free throw. What a game she's having. 13 points and 12 boards. One more. Eight point lead. Nope. That rebound though is tipped. And a layoff, six, five, four, three. Snipes will fire a long three off the mark. Ball game over. And the Tars will hang on and win 72 to 65 and break a three-game losing streak. Lynn will uh, drop down to 9 and 11, 5 and 8 in the conference. Tars now 11 and 8, 6 and 7. And uh, this is a, a good way to, to go on a two game road trip. A huge victory for Rollins and Engler and Andrews, combining for all 11 points in the fourth quarter. And V. Andrews, 3 of 4 from the foul line in the last minute. Uh, and we were worried about, you were worried about why, why you got it, why you letting her shoot, why you letting her shoot. And next thing you know, Hits the first two free throws, takes it to a five-point lead, six-point lead, hits the second first part of the two shots, and... Tars end up uh, shooting 48%. Boy, that's uh, a lot better than they have been recently, including uh, eight of 18 beyond the arc, just four of 10 from the line. They're plus one rebounding at Lynn, 37% from the floor, six of 15. So they were one of their last 10 from three-point land.